Good morning and welcome to the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies for 2010. Uh, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm Director of Athletics and I want to, on behalf of Dr. Dunlap and Wofford, welcome all of you here uh, on a day which is always a happy occasion as we honor our best and brightest, uh, or in some cases not our brightest, uh, <laughs> athletes of all time. Uh, that that, that um, is not one of the components of the uh, selection criteria. However, this year all would fall under that category. Um, uh, as, our, as is our custom, every year we ask that uh, all current members of the Hall of Fame please stand and be recognized at this time. Come on, Tom. Come on, stand up. Tom wasn't paying attention. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call on our president, Dr. Ber Bernie Dunlap, for some comments. Uh, about 10 years ago, I had just become president, and I was invited to attend the ceremony in Raleigh. Jerry Richardson was being inducted into the North Carolina Athletic Hall of Fame. Um, and it was an extraordinary experience. Um, as an old athlete myself, but nowhere near being a Hall of Famer, um, I felt like a foot soldier um, in the company of the captains and kings of glorious wars from the past. But I, I have to admit, um, they introduced all of the former inductees, um, and they did it beginning with the oldest. Uh, so uh, they announced Mary Lou Smith, 1922 National AAU Butterfly Swimming Champion. Um, and I waited as she made her way to the podium and it was a slow walk. And, and then they introduced somebody who had played baseball in 1925. And I, I watched these old heroes make their way to the platform. And I, I had all sorts of melancholy thoughts about time and mortality. Um, uh, and then I heard them say, Ina Slaughter. Ina Slaughter, I remember that mad dash for home beating Johnny Pesky's throw at the, at the plate by just a half an inch. His coach frantically trying to stop him, but Slaughter determined to make his way um, into glory as he did. Um, uh, and I was on my feet cheering wildly. There is something, there is something about the antique glory uh, of those who put it all on the line and who triumph. Um, there's something in the individual recognition that we all applaud, and each of the persons we're honoring today um, has extraordinary individual achievement. But what is really significant in my mind um, is that each of these honorees was part of a team. Um, they contributed to the team, um, uh, and the team shared in the glory they achieved. Um, and the biggest team of all is Walford College. Um, there, there is a tradition reaching back to the very beginning of this college. Um, and each of the people being honored today represents a, a certain moment um, over the past century and a half um, uh, in which this college has gotten better and better. Somebody asked me just a few minutes ago if we were having a good year. Um, and I shook my head and I said, you know, the only way I can describe it is the same feeling you get when you see Breitenstein bounce off three or four tacklers and break into the clear with nothing but 80 yards and a touchdown ahead of him. I mean, your heart soars. Yeah, we're on a wonderful roll. Um, but it is something that is achieved um, because so many people, like each of you in this room, um, has been part of that larger team. I thank you all. I congratulate those who are being honored today. Um, and um, I look forward to all the glories to come. Thank you. I, I always promise myself I'll never follow Dr. Dunlap uh, as a speaker. And I don't know why I persist in doing that. Thank you, Dr. Dunlap. Uh, since uh, he has uh, some duties later today to take care of, our first uh, 
Uh, person to do the induction will be Mike Ayers. And coach, if you'll come up and induct a couple of your former players, starting with Lee. Where's Lee? Uh, I have to be brief. I wish I didn't. Uh, both of these guys are special guys to me. Um, when Lee came to Wofford, uh, he was one of those guys that, uh, uh, I guess the term today is he was an undersized guy. And when we were recruiting him, I, I can remember Coach Teachy, he's in the back there. He, he brought me a film and he said, Coach, he said, what do you think about this guy right here? He said, he's a little undersized he was kidding about little he was a lot undersized but it was one of those deals where he said uh, take a look at him and see what you think I put on the film and I watched the film and I watched the film quite frankly in awe uh, he was a guy that played his brains out his guts out his soul out and he was a guy that somehow some way I knew could help us be a good football team Lebo came to Wofford and he was one of those guys that uh, had been a good football player. And uh, when he came to Wofford, I think he upped his game. I think he was a guy that, quite frankly, uh, you, you always wonder in life, who are the guys you want in your foxhole? Lebo's a guy that definitely would be in my foxhole. Uh, he cared about the football team. He cared about doing things right. Uh, he cared about uh, his fellow teammates, and he cared about Wofford. Uh, he wasn't in it for the glory, because quite frankly, defensive linemen and offensive linemen, they don't get a whole lot of glory. And uh, Lebo played the game the, the way that, that we want him to play the game. He played it wide open, all out, and uh, he did it for the glory of God and for the honor of Wofford. That's how he played. Um, both of these guys, I love them. I love them, not because they were all Americans or the Jacobs blocking trophy, but because of the type of people that they are. Uh, Lebo, they told me to keep it brief. Uh, all I can tell you is this, well-deserved, well-deserved. Well, I have to say this, this is an honor to join all the, all the Hall, Hall, Hall of Famers in this room and everything else. Um, I don't know if I deserve some of, some of the stuff you said, but thank you. Thank you uh, to my parents. I know my, my senior year here, uh, my dad was in Arkansas. My mom was here going through job changes and everything, but my parents were here every game. F flew in from Arkansas to, to wherever. Um, uh, Co Coach Tichy in the back, thank you, man. Uh, couldn't have done, done it without you. Um, I found a home here. Uh, the, this, uh, this school has done more for me than I can ever get, 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 get back. But th thank you all for everything. Enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Our next inductee is Eric Deutsch. And again, I'll turn it over to Mike Ayers. As I said about Lebo, he was an undersized defensive lineman. <laughs> this next candidate does not fall in that category. <laughs> Big E. Big E. I can remember the day I first met him. I was at Wyoming High School. I was in search of players. And uh, the coach said, hey, I, I've got this kid. He's a big kid. Uh, kind of learning the game. Uh, you may want to take a look. Look at him on film a little bit. So I put the film in, and quite frankly, the thing that sold me on him was the, the bend in his knees and his ankles. It wasn't that he was like six foot four and 300 pounds already. It was because of the, the bend in his knees and the bend in his ankles. I knew that there was something there. 
I knew there was something there that, that we needed to take a chance on. And quite frankly, I, I, don't, I don't think he was a heralded player coming out of high school, but uh, there was something there. And I can remember him walking down the hall and, you know, he has a distinct walk, and I'm saying, hmm, hmm, I'm not sure about this guy. He sits down right across the table from me. We talk, and he's one of those guys that's easy to talk to, easy to talk to. And so we talked a little bit about Walford, talked about coming down for a visit, and long story short, we ended up signing him that year, and he came to Walford. I think he was a guy in search of he was a guy in search of a lot of things. He, he wanted an education, and he wanted an education not only from an academic standpoint, but I think he wanted an education in life to see how far that he could grow and become and mature as a man. And he got down here, and uh, it was probably more than he wanted, tougher than he wanted, but the thing of it was, I, I could see, I could see he started to grow. He started to mature. He started to get to where he actually started believing in himself. And it's hard to imagine a guy that's six foot four, 300 pounds, lacking confidence in being able to move people around. I mean, when you're that big, you can move this building. And it's one of those things where I, I saw E grow, and I saw him grow into a man and I saw him grow into a great player. When they elected him as the best offensive lineman in our conference, 100%, he was. He was. And at that time, for what we did and for what he did, he was the best offensive lineman in the country. He became a guy that when you lined up against him, you better have your lunch bucket packed with some extra goodie bars because he was going to be there all day and he was going to wear your tail out. And uh, he kind of led the offensive line the last couple years as far as just the attitude. Defensively, the attitude's always about being aggressive, knocking people around, hitting them in the mouth and all that stuff. But we took that and we carried it over to the offensive line and a big part of it was him. You did not want to stand around if you were playing against that guy. Because if you were standing around, he was fixing to launch you about 10 yards down the field. He had the best punch with a right hand that, that I've ever seen. And the great thing is, he did his business on the field, and he did his business off the field. He was a quality student, a quality leader. He's a great guy, a little bit bigger than I remember, but, <laughs> but he's one of those guys that, just like Lebo, he deserves it. He deserves it. Um, I'm disappointed that he didn't bring me some White Castles and a Skyline, but we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> e, come on up, bud. Yeah, I definitely put on a few pounds since I was last here, but uh, I guess it happens. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, especially the coaches, uh, Coach Harris for giving me a chance to play. Uh, my teammates, Lee, going against my practice every day only made us better, made me better. It was great. Uh, my family supported me the whole time. Uh, my my extended family and uh, my. Uh, my uh, grandpa Jack, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. <sighs> Last time he got to see me play, unfortunately I had to leave during the game. Uh, it was 2002. It was our Furman game, and that was a very muddy game, to say the least. He couldn't be out in the weather, unfortunately. Uh, and the saddest thing I remember about that is I had a concussion that week that no one knew about until the next week. I unfortunately don't remember it. Uh, then the next year, 2003, when we had our great run, he wasn't able to make it to the Air Force game. Uh, 
and he wasn't able to come down to another game, unfortunately, that that year. Uh, our third week of the year was our bye week, and I got a call letting me know he had passed away. And he he loved uh, football. He loved the fact I was playing football, and it made me so happy. He only wanted the best for me at that time, and the, my dad t- told me that you know he waited until I'd be able to be up there with him. He waited till the bye week to pass away. He fought that long. He wasn't doing well at all. And so then the rest of the season, it was, it was tough because he had always been you know, essentially my biggest fan. When we would pray before games, after games, whatever it was, I wasn't thinking about anything else, but I was just hoping he was able to watch our games finally, be able to come to a game and watch us, be able to see me play. And that was the most important thing. I felt he was with me the whole year. If I could give him the awards, show him what happened that year, show him our championship rings, the plaques we've received for him to be here would be amazing. And unfortunately, he couldn't be here. But I know he is with us, and that's what's important. We love him. He's meant more to my family than I think he'll ever realize, anyone will ever know. And... All I can say is thank you. Thank you, Grandpa Jack, for always being with us. Thank you. Thank you for everything you gave us and the opportunities you allowed us to pursue. So, with that, thank you again for this honor. Without him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have had this opportunity. And it was his drive that helped me find mine. So, thank you. Eric, I don't, I don't know what, what Coach Ayers was referring to because um, I, I lent you my suit and I think it's a little big on you. <laughs> um, at this time, I would like to call on our Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees and current member of the Hall of Fame, Harold Chandler, to make our induction of Ed Weil. Thank you very much, Richard, for allowing me to participate this morning. Wofford College, as everyone in this audience certainly knows, is a very special place. Fortunately, we attract special people, and in some cases, unusual people, or you might say extraordinary people, people who show their substantial skill and loyal teamwork and bold leadership on the athletic fields during their four years here at Wofford. Ed Weil certainly did that from 1969 to 1973 when he started all four years as a defensive back and a punt returner, compiling individual records at our college that began to define, for many of us, the athlete and the man, even in those formative years. Achievements that place him at the top of the record books at Wofford for intercepted passes, return yards after interception, Touchdowns after interception, punt return yards. And actually there's one that I, I'm not sure actually is in the records book and actually kept, but one that his teammates granted him nevertheless was, now listen to this, percent of punts successfully caught when the defenders are within six inches of your face mask. <laughs> I think you came up with that one, Ed. (laughs) If you are anything like myself, these individual records, official or unofficial, begin to paint a picture of the man. Decisive, fast to the ball, smart, absolutely fearless. Stalking. Of course, only a former quarterback would use that term in describing an all-star cornerback on an all-star team. But all of his teammates and coaches would describe Ed as always prepared, unselfish, completely dependable. And I say this particularly to Ed's family, genuinely loved by his teammates and his coaches. 
Let me close on a point that is truly a distinguishing characteristic of Ed Weil, the athlete and the man. Ed absolutely understands and lives the concept of giving back. What more honorable trait can a man possess? Ed has chosen with the support of his wife, Vicki, to give back to Wofford College. Today, they have funded several endowed scholarships to help other deserving student athletes benefit from a Wofford experience. These scholarships will be an everlasting legacy to this unusual man. Since the days we played together here at Wofford, we competed together for a national championship in football in 1970, and even through today as we serve together on the Wofford Board of Trustees, he has been an inspiration to me and to many others. He is my brother in every sense of the word. There is no doubt other halls of fame will recognize Ed Weil in the days ahead. But today, it is the Wofford College Athletic Hall of Fame that is doing so. All of us who know this man and love this college could not be more proud. Congratulations, Ed. After that, what can somebody say? By the way, Harold, I thought that if you fair caught the ball, it counted against your average. <laughs> Harold's actually been an inspiration to me. He's, he exemplifies the leadership. Frankly, he did as a quarterback back in our championship season, but even today. Um, Tom Bauer. Tom Bauer is my lifetime friend here who also played on this team. Um, Tom was probably one of the best defensive players I knew and the smartest. I remember a game at Presbyterian College where I kept asking him, so Tom, how do you block so many punts? And he said, well, just watch. So he had this All-American tight end and Tom told the guy, look, we're not rushing. And so, First time they punt, he just flattens Tom. Tom dusts himself off. Well, that goes on about three plays, and he keeps saying, look, we're not rushing, man. About in the third quarter, Tom's finally softened the guy up, and he rushes by and blocks the punt, picks it up, takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. He said, it's not that hard. I learned from Tom that there are a lot of different ways to beat people. You don't have to beat them physically. You can beat them mentally. Tom also helped me here at Wofford when I came. Uh, we were in class probably two weeks, and I looked over at Tom and I uh, said, Tom, there are no girls in this class. He laughed. After class, I said, so Tom, what's so funny? He said, Ed, there are not only no girls in this class, there are no girls in this school. <laughs> so to say I was naive was, uh, Harold was, Harold was very kind. I want to thank my mom, who's here. Um, you know, she's always believed. She's always supported. I think she handed me her last dollars when I left Worcester, Ohio, to come to Spartanburg, South Carolina, to go to college. She made me believe that that money was a loan. I was going to have to pay that money back. And I'll never forget her telling me, now, when you go, you need to get a good education. It's one of the few things in life that people cannot take away from you. So what great wisdom, Mom. I don't see Jack Peterson here right now, although Jack Peterson and Vera Parsons played a huge role in uh, my life. Jack was my football coach in high school. And he um, called me into his office. I grew up in a little town. People didn't go to college. So uh, 
I'd turned down a lot of scholarships to go places. He called me in his office in April and he said, Ed, uh, I want you to know I'm going to Walford College to be the offensive coordinator. He said, I'd like for you to come with me. He said, you can play college football. And he said, and college will make a difference in your life. I sat there for a few seconds. I said, okay, coach, what do I need to do? So that's how I ended up here. So I owe an awful lot to Jack Peterson for really just believing in me. And then finally, those in the community know Vera Parsons. She actually was the donor that provided the scholarship that, that I went to school here on. There's one other person I'd really like. Really like to honor, and that's my wife. She is the greatest guy to wink ever. She's the best wife, partner, and friend. And frankly, without her and Walford College, I can assure everybody in this room, I would be dead or in jail today. Thank you very much for this award. I am unbelievably humbled. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, our next inductee is William McGirt. Uh, William uh, was a golfer here at Wofford and is still a golfer today. Uh, his wife, Sarah, is here representing him. Uh, William could not be with us as he's playing on the nationwide tour uh, and is very close. Uh, these next couple of weeks are very close and we'll determine whether or not he gets his PGA card for next year. So we do have a taped um, Dan. Well, oh, well. Dan, well, I'm going to bring, I, I know, but I mean, I was, I wouldn't do that later. There you go. Um, it's early. Um, his golf coach is here, Dan O'Connell, who was our golf coach and, and, and taught William all he knows. Right, Dan? Absolutely. That's a good, good way to cover up and a good segue into Dan O'Connell. Thank you for remembering me, Richard. In the spring of 1996, I got a telephone call from a friend of mine who was the director of junior golf for the Carolinas Golf Association. He told me about a young man from Fairmont, North Carolina. And if you're like me, you didn't know where Fairmont is. It's uh, just over the North Carolina, South Carolina line um, between Florence, South Carolina and Fayetteville, North Carolina, just off I-95. He said, this young man's got a lot of potential and I think you ought to take a look at him. I had the opportunity that summer to watch William play, liked what I saw, recruited him. He came to Wofford in the fall of 1997. As you know, golf is an individual sport. College golf has adopted a format that allows to have a team competition as well as an individual competition. And the way it works is this. You take five players to a tournament, and most of the tournaments have anywhere from 11 to 17 other teams competing. You play mostly three round tournaments, 54 holes, and each round you get to throw out the high score on your team. So it's kind of a play five, count four format. And uh, you don't really play a conference schedule like you do in other sports. And as you know, the object of golf is to come up with a lower score rather than try to score more points than your opponent. William made an immediate impact here at Wofford. In his first tournament, he finished fourth out of 90 players with a score of four under par. Continued his fine play throughout his freshman year. In fact, in his fourth event, he, he came out on top at Davidson and, and won the individual championship. He had uh, four top 10 finishes as a freshman, including a tie for fifth in the Southern Conference Championship, and was named the Freshman of the Year in the Southern Conference. That was quite an honor for Wofford at that time because that was, in fact, the first year Wofford had competed in the Southern Conference. Continued his fine play throughout his career and just want to hit a couple of highlights. Uh, in his junior year, he won the prestigious Augusta State University 
Invitational with three consecutive rounds of 69. Another player that won that same championship whose name you might recognize is Phil Mickelson who won that championship while he was playing for Arizona State University. At the conclusion of his junior year, he finished second in the Southern Conference Championship, losing by one stroke on the last hole. He concluded his career here at Wofford with his best career round of 67 in the final round of the 2001 Southern Conference Championship. And Harold, that was played at the Chattanooga Golf and Country Club. And I will never will forget you arranging for our team to play there one time. Uh, that time he wound up tied for the championship with a three-round score of 205. And he won that year uh, on the first hole of a sudden death playoff with the same player who had won by one stroke the previous year, the defending champion. And as Richard has already alluded to, uh, William's athletic career didn't end when he finished playing here at Wofford. He continued to play at a very high level of amateur golf for a couple of years and in fact won the 2003 North Carolina Amateur Championship. While at Wofford, he had met a pretty young co-ed, as we called him, I guess, here from Spartanburg, South Carolina, Sarah. And they were married a couple of years later in 2004. And shortly after that, William began his professional career. As Richard has said, he is currently a member of the Nationwide Tour, which is the golf equivalent of AAA baseball, if you will. And each year, the top 25 off the nationwide tour graduate, if you will, or earn their PGA Tour cards for the following year. With three tournaments to go, William stands 33rd on that money list with 2010 earnings of over uh, $150,000. There's no doubt in my mind that William will one day be on the PGA Tour, if not in 2011, certainly very soon. Just to recap, uh, he has several records in the Division I era here at Wofford. His three tournament wins are the most during that time. His nine top ten career uh, finishes, and he has a low career stroke average during that time. Um, before I ask Sarah, to come up, I, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention how important you are to William's success. Uh, William has played, we think, in 23 nationwide tour events, uh, with the first one being in Bogota, Colombia, where he finished third. He's been all across this country several times. He's been on the road, I think, for eight straight weeks. And that's tough on a wife and a young, young marriage. Sarah has her own successful career with Adidas here in Spartanburg, and I know how important you are to William's success, and I need to keep reminding him to tell you that every chance he gets. <laughs> but I would like to ask Sarah to come up and accept this award on behalf of William. And I, I'm not technologically able to do what we're going to do next. Thank you. I'm sorry that I can't be here today. I'm currently in Miami, Florida, playing in a nationwide tour event in pursuit of a PGA Tour card. I'd like to thank the Terrier Club and the Hall of Fame Committee for selecting me to the 2010 Hall of Fame class at Walford. I wouldn't be here today without the support of a few individuals along the way. Um, first, Vic Lipscomb and Angie Ridgeway, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to play with the Walford Golf Teams when I'm at home and allowing me to use the Walford Golf Room in Andrews Fieldhouse. Vic, thank you for the many swing tips and putting tips when I was in college. Uh, they really helped a lot. Um, Coach Johnson, uh, thank you for always keeping the mood light. Um, your sense of humor always, always found a way to uh, keep me laughing and keep me loose. Um, Danny Morrison, uh, Danny was one of the first people I met at Walford. Um, he always made sure that I was okay. Uh, if I ever needed anything, uh, I could always go to him. 
Danny always came out and supported me during the Wofford Invitational. Unfortunately, he never brought enough birdies with him. Um, my college coach, Dan O'Connell. Um, coach, I know you recruited me pretty hard out of high school. You took a chance on a player who didn't have a high school golf team and had only been playing competitive golf for two, two and a half years. Um, I know we always didn't see eye to eye when I was in college, um, but now as I've gotten older and gotten out, um, I know exactly what you were trying to get me to do. Um, you were trying to get me to do my best, work hard, um, and you always stress the importance of grades as well as athletic performance. Um, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you pushed me as hard as you did. Um, like I said, looking back at it now, I really understand that you wanted the best for all of us on the, on the uh, golf course, in the classroom, and in life in general. Um, I'm really looking forward to our next trip to Wade's. Uh, it's my treat this time. Uh, we can go have fun and catch up, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, again, I'd like to thank the Terrier Club and the Hall of Fame Committee for selecting me to this year's class. Um, unfortunately, I can't be here today, but my wife will be accepting my award on my behalf, and I'm really appreciative to Walford and to the Terry Club. Thank you. You, you um, I always learn something at these Hall of Fame ceremonies, and today Dan taught me something. I, I've been going about my golf game all wrong. I've been going the high end, Dan. Um, <laughs> who knew? Um, in addition to our Hall of Fame inductees, uh, each year the Hall of Fame committee selects uh, an honorary letterman and, an honor and a distinguished service award winner. Uh, this year they've made some incredibly wonderful selections and um, uh, it is my pleasure to um, uh, introduce uh, Ann Johnson as our distinguished service winner, award winner. Many of you know that, uh, it, that the Hall of Fame falls under the auspices of the Terrier Club. Uh, and one of the, you know, our, our mission in the Terry Club is to raise funds to provide scholarships for deserving student athletes. Uh, and, and that is, you know, you get all the phone calls and we're always calling and trying to raise money on an annual basis. We, we're trying to find a fun way, instead of just calling you up and asking you for more money to, to, to raise those dollars. And we came up with the Terrier Ball under Dr. Wood when he was athletic director. Uh, and the Terrier Ball started in 2000. And at that time, Barry Foy, our Terry Club president, asked Ann to chair the event. We had 300 people show up that year, and we raised $21,000. Ann has been an integral part of that. In, in the next year, in 2001, the event raised $60,000, and it pushed our Terrier Club giving past the million dollar mark for the first time in history. That's how important the Terrier Ball has been to the Terrier Club and to our student athletes. Last year we celebrated our 10th anniversary. We had our 10th anniversary gala. And we had almost 800 people and raised $151,000. Those are incredible sums. And, and in large part, while there's a lot of people involved in it, Ann Johnson gets the lion's share of the credit for that. She's been a driving force behind it. She's innovative, she's, she, she's forward thinking. Last year she proposed taking a portion of our, our proceeds, typically we put those proceeds in the Terrier Club, which is our annual giving. She said we need to make sure there's something here forever and ever. And we've taken a portion of those proceeds now and put it into an endowed scholarship fund. And each year a certain percentage of our, of our uh, earnings from the Terrier Ball will go into that endowed scholarship so that it will provide financial uh, assistance to student athletes in per, into per, perpetuity. Last year we also uh, initiated a fund a need where at the end of the night our goal was to raise an additional scholarship. And the, the auctioneer got up and, and I think he started and, and asked uh, for a number and the first one to raise her hand was Ann Johnson, uh, followed shortly by Ed and Mike. Uh, and Mike said, now I understand why you wanted me at the Terrier Ball. Um, and I said, no, Mike, it's really because I like you. Um, but Ann has been instrumental in that. She's over on Friday. Terry will have all of her volunteers on Friday. They'll, they'll turn a, 
uh, a, a basketball arena into a show place. I mean, it looks – the first time I walked in, I couldn't believe – I was still coaching. I couldn't believe it was where I go to work every day. It just looked uh, completely transformed. Ann and, and, uh, and, and she recruits her daughters to come over and help and daughter-in-laws and, and all of her friends and, and does a great job with that. Um, and this lovely room that we now occupy is a result of Ann's – uh, drive and energy. Uh, when Mr. Richardson gave us a check to renovate the building, uh, Ann kind of took it upon herself to help us with this room and brought in a great decorator, spent hours pouring over uh, fabrics and colors and schemes and, and helped with the artwork and, uh, and helped save money too. She did all did it within budget, which is something I've never been able to do. Um, and, and her generosity is not just directed toward athletics. But, but impacts athletics. Uh, Ann and her husband, Stuart, uh, gave Wofford an endowed professorship uh, in honor of her brother, John Cobb, an English professor here and a very gifted and talented teacher and a friend of mine. Um, and, and that scholarship, or pardon me, that endowed professorship uh, provides our, all of our students, but, but also our student athletes, uh, with, with high level, high quality uh, education. Uh, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, an honor to have that endowed chair. Anne is also, uh, you know, so warm and welcoming and generous and gracious. Um, and and each year, uh, uh, it, it my ego was inflated because each year at the Terrier Ball we have a uh, an auction item where you get to have dinner with me. And uh, sometimes we're in these exotic cities like St. Louis or uh, uh, Indianapolis. Um, San Antonio, and, and it always made me feel good. I'd go home and say, Ann Johnson wants to eat with me. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, um, and, then, I, I, and then all of a sudden I was deflated because I found out somebody asked her, why do you always want to go to lunch with Richard in those cities? And she said, well, because usually he's got Final Four tickets with him. And, <laughs> <laughs> and here, Ann, I thought it was because of me. And we thank you for your grace, your thoughtfulness, but most of all for your generosity with your time and resources and all that you do on behalf of Wofford. And it gives me great pleasure uh, to present this year's Distinguished Service Award to Ann Johnson. Well, first of all, how do you follow Richard and our esteemed president and all of you other wonderful inductees? But I do want to thank everyone for this honor. And I particularly want to thank the people who I actually, actually need to share this honor with. This honor that is given to me is the result of many people's labor and love. First of all, Terry LeWitt, her wonderful staff, they work tirelessly, day in and day out, raising money, supporting this school, and setting such a wonderful example of our school to others. And then Barry Foy, I haven't seen him today, but he was giving of his time and talents to this organization long before many of you were even a freshman at this school. He, as Richard said, uh, had the idea for the Terrier Ball and came up to me and asked me to be chairman. I have enjoyed, I have been proud, I have been so proud last year when the Terrier Ball raised $151,000. I was even more excited when they were able to set aside part of this money to help begin an endowed scholarship that will carry on for our athletics. Most of all, I am very honored to accept this award on a lot of people's behalf and to have my name associated with people like you. Thank you. Uh, for our next award, the Honorary Letterman Award, we actually have two winners this year. Uh, the Hall of Fame committee felt strongly and, uh, and selected two, and that's rather unusual. And for that presentation to uh, Mike Brown, I introduce the, de the academic dean of the college, Dr. David Wood. 
Thank you, Richard, and thanks to all of you. Congratulations to all of you, particularly your, our inductees. Uh, I, I was a college athlete and never asked to be at one of these as an inductee, and it is, it is an extraordinarily high honor. Think of 300 plus athletes who come through Wofford and participate at a very high level uh, every year. Add that up over the years and you start to get a sense of just how uh, special membership in a college like this Hall of Fame is. Let me say a word about, in general, why we're here and, and, and why this is so special, what's happening at Wofford. And, and we've just noted the contributions by Ann Johnson. Our next two um, honorees uh, are part of this ilk. This really shouldn't be going on at Wofford. Um, uh, it should not have happened. Division I athletics at a high quality, rigorous liberal arts institution most people said was not possible. Now, I've spent my career working at three different private colleges. I've been involved in this line of work for 30 years. I studied, my, my doctorate at Vanderbilt was actually an interdisciplinary program in the study of the field of higher education. And everything in the literature, everything in the numbers, everything about program quality says one cannot do this at this level, at this kind of place. The scale is lacking. There's, there's just not enough people. There's not a, a large enough resource base. The real key to it for Wofford uh, sits in this room, the Terrier Club. When the Southern Conference came here and took a look at Wofford, and most, persons, most people said there's no way the Southern Conference will admit Wofford, they found something ex extraordinary. And on a per capita basis, they noticed there was not an institution in America raising the kinds of dollars that Wofford was raising to support student athletic scholarships. And that had not just started in the 90s. They looked back at the tradition, because you didn't want to do if it, uh, recognize that if it, if it was a flash in the pan kind of thing. And it had extended back decades and decades. And so you sit around now, they recognize that there was one liberal arts college of distinction that could do this. Others have tried and failed, unfortunately, have followed the Wofford model, and we've actually had a couple of serious um, tragedies of sort, meltdowns for those institutions across the country. And that can't be counted in the numbers. Uh, the missing ingredient in those efforts has been the commitment, loyalty, and service of persons like those we honor today. So that is what truly makes Wofford special. Uh, our next honoree um, is a member of our Board of Trustees. I will not repeat what you have already seen in your program, but suffice it to say, Mike Brown, who gives an uh, awful lot of credit to his time at Wofford every time he's on his feet, um, left here, earned a master's degree at Tulane, and then went on to s begin to see what others had not seen yet on the horizon, health care related uh, uh, economic opportunities. And he turned those particularly into the senior living um, uh, uh, surge that was coming. He turned those into a very successful group of companies. And then he's taken his largesse and success from that and continued to do wonderful things at Wofford. As a member of our board, he and others recognized some things here that others many thought couldn't be done, creating, for example, a new type of senior housing concept. Everybody has apartments, but Mike and others with Mike's initiative uh, began to talk about how about apartments with a twist, apartments that brought uh, a senior class back together, that gave them a special uh, and enriching learning opportunity in that senior year that created a stronger sense of community that would tie them forever more strongly back to the college so that decades and decades from now, some of them will be in this room because they have uh, lent extraordinary assistance to the college uh, over many, many years. And the result of that was what we know is the, uh, the Wofford Village, which has been na uh, nationally recognized by two, organ two organizations as the finest residential housing project in America. Uh, so Mike Brown has given, and our coaches and all will tell you the direct, indirect tie to athletics when Mike Ayers brings that group on campus when uh, the basketball team brings those candidates in. Uh, the momentum and energy that Mike and fellow trustees have created here uh, makes that recruiting process uh, 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 easier. And, and we're in a hyper-competitive environment 
uh, to go down and beat Georgia Southern last week, to beat Furman the week before, to turn around today and play a large state university in Western, North, uh, Western Carolina. So uh, the, uh, the initiatives uh, launched by Mike have certainly helped athletics in many, many ways, our entire student body, and uh, it's an honor and a privilege to uh, present Mike to you as our newest honorary letterman, Mike Brown. You know, there's always first in life, and uh, for me to think 36 years later I'd be introduced by the academic dean was not one of the first things I had on my mind. Uh, so, uh, so that 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 is uh, very meaningful for me. Um, it um, it's an honor uh, to be here to accept this award. I. I don't feel very deserving when I look, look at these guys and, and see what they accomplished and, and, and having known Ed and what he dedicated to this college on the field. Um, it's, I'm not one of you. I wanted to be one of you, um, but I'm not one of you. Um, Richard Johnson for the last month could not come up with a sport that I could get a letter in. <laughs> He calls me this morning and says, equestrian, we asked Mr. Ed. So that is not a lot of confidence to come in front of you today to accept an award. Um, but, but I'm very honored, and, and I wanted to tell you why I was honored. Just like you, big guy. Watford has meant so much to me, obviously. And it's... The, the, the people you meet and some of the biggest people I've met have been the athletes. You know, I got to serve on the athletic committee and we got to have um, male and female athletes come in and, and sit down and talk to us and, and to see their level of commitment. And I was struck by a lot of things. First of all, they had such a passion for their sport. You know, they knew they weren't going to do it professionally, but they just had this passion and they wouldn't give it up. They would sacrifice, not like me, a normal student. They not only had to be at practice for three hours under a Mike Ayers, but they had to be at lab. They got no special treatment. They had to put in the hours when they were so tired. And to be able to do that, and the one I always remember is Tom Bauer. Tom was an unbelievable student. He truly was a, an All-American, and he truly did block punts. And he truly was at the fraternity house till 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but let, me, let me tell you what else Tom Bowers did. Tom Bowers delivered the morning newspaper. He got up every morning with his dog Stymie and deliver that newspaper. He did it all. And that's what our athletes do. We are the poster ch child for what college athletics is supposed to be about. I mean, it, it really is. We do it the right way, and, it, and it's an honor to be considered amongst your group that did it right, that worked so hard, that had a passion. And, and so when I looked at receiving this award, I knew it wasn't because of my athletic prowess. Though I did get best shooter at Jim Hartman's 1966 basketball camp, I, I wanted, to, I, I want, I did want to throw that in there. Mike James remembers Jim, and it had one of those punched-in letters, you know, where you put the punched-in letters. I always remember. That's my wife, who I owe a lot. I still have it. <laughs> but, but what, what my job on the honorary side, I always felt is, 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 seeing how. Your athletics, whether it's tennis, it's golf, uh, has given the alumni, the student body, such a wealth of pride in what you do. And it gives us a sense that we're really part of something that's pretty powerful. And, 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 and my job is to be a part of that and see it. And I see it how it's changed our college and how some of the best and brightest we recruit here to this college are athletes. And, 
when you talk about a sense of pride, uh, I was watching last year when Wofford basketball team beat South Carolina. Remember that? How good that felt? You know, here's this school, big, and we beat it. I thought that was the, the punchline, that we beat South Carolina. But the, the camera was still on, and it, fil it showed filming the players singing our alma mater. And they were singing it. And I looked over, and there was our conference player of the year, you know, our All-American, our leader. He was singing it with such passion that it made such a difference to me. Here was an, an athlete who, who, who gave us so much, but I saw what Wofford gave back to him. And it meant the world to me, that he went embarrassed to sing his song, that he was so proud of this school and what he took us. And, uh, in the recognition that he gave this school. And when people think about Walford, they think about you guys and you guys and Bowers over there and Harold. And that is a tremendous sense of pride to be a small part of it. And I uh, thank you very much. Thank you, um, first of all, I want to, Mr. Ed was very enthusiastic about you being on his. <laughs> Mr. Ed was enthusiastic this morning. Um, and had I known about that shooting award, you could have played for me. I'd have recruited you, had I only known. Um, of course, I'd have gotten fired a couple years sooner, too. But that's uh, to present our, our final honorary letterman, uh, a close personal friend of mine as well, Joe Taylor and uh, Dr. David Wood again. Thank you. And uh, I just have to comment while I'm up here. I was, too, a defensive back years and years ago. I wasn't smart enough to get in Wofford. I went to Elon and uh, played against Wofford during those areas. And Ed, I did know how to call a fair catch. <laughs> uh, and I also remember uh, we talk about initiative and risk taking, the Terrier ball that, uh, that Ann so successfully launched with other volunteers. But that first year, Richard alluded, we thought we had to have 300 people in the gym to make it feel like a success. And we were really sweating that we couldn't get this thing going. And we were, we were literally giving away tickets on the street, uh, encouraging people to come. And again, the, the success and momentum of that is just a, another uh, phenomenal story in higher education, not, not just in, um, in, in the world of athletics. Um, Speaking of risk-taking and entrepreneurial spirit, our next inductee uh, represents that at its highest level. While a, while a student here, and you young people uh, may want to pay close attention to this, he, he launched with his father a successful business. By age 25, he was the CEO, as you've noted in your program of that business. Um, let me give you a couple of numbers uh, of late that are worthy of note. Uh, in the midst of the Great Recession, uh, South Carolina uh, has led the Southeast in job creation on a pro rata basis over the last uh, few years. There have been six announcements in this state in the um, amidst of the Great Recession of 1,000 plus uh, job, uh, new, new locations, developments, new companies coming. Uh, all that has occurred on the watch of our honoree Joe Taylor as South Carolina's Secretary of Commerce. Uh, Joe has spent a life creating, uh, giving, and, and helping others. And then at a time when Wofford, and with my background in athletics, I can shed a little bit of inside information on this. Shortly after the Richardson building opened, the science of uh, weight training began to change. And as you know, that has progressed a lot over the years. And what we now know as free, free weight, Olympic weight lifting designed just for the training particularly in football, but in all sports, powerlifting. We used to watch it as kids, you know, only in the Olympics. It's now the way um, uh, college athletes are trained. And if you're not doing that successfully, you'll fall behind. Well, this building was designed right before that era emerged. And so Wofford found itself uh, really with an inadequate facility, as wonderful as this was for that particular type of uh, a very important training to help make our athletes successful on the field. Uh, enter uh, Joe Taylor and an idea to take um, a, a Sal's ear, the old maintenance building right here above us, and turn it into a beautiful silk purse, just as he has done in his uh, businesses and in his other work. And so we have the Joe E. Taylor Athletic Center with an absolutely state-of-the-art 
free, free weight training center uh, for all of our student athletes and we even open it for other students at, at scheduled times when they can come and participate. What an enormous impact that's having on our athletic program, our entire campus, and on our future going forward. Also a member of our Board of Trustee, uh, Secretary of Commerce, Honorary Letterman now at Wofford, Joe Taylor. Please come forward. I learned a long time ago, when you go last, be brief. Um, <laughs> two things, I would just say, what a great privilege and honor it is to, to be here today you know, with folks like Harold Chandler and Tom Bauer and Ed, the names we saw on the wall when we were in school that were legends. I mean, they were the guys we wanted to be when we grew up, and uh, it's, it really is an honor. And then, and I, I would just say one last thing, and that's a message to Ann and John, my kids. You see what the school means. And you see what people learn is to give back. That's a common denominator amongst everybody. And uh, that's something to keep in mind as you grow up. Thanks. Every year I'd, I'd say that we've had a great class and, and it's a special group of people, but I don't know that uh, there's been a year where we've had a, a more important group of people to Wofford College that we were able to honor today. Uh, thank you so much for all you did during your playing careers at Wofford and, and what you'll continue to do. And for those of you, the special honorees, uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate all that, that you do.